It is good to have you back. If you're just joining us, this is Fire Cafe as well. We are on to our second topic. You've missed quite a little, but you can still catch up. And this is on peculiarities that came with the ministerial portfolio appointment. So the president finally gave these ministers to their portfolio, the one that was screened by the Senate. With the portfolio of it. Uh, you, you see, I, I read it in some print medias and then I also listened to some television stations of the uh, allocation of the offices to the uh, minister designate. I think by what I read, they will be shown it tomorrow, if I'm correct. Uh, let, let us be careful with what we say. Uh, the president has the discretion to choose and to allocate offices to whoever he wants because uh, uh, ordinarily they are his confidence and then what he wants is what he gives out but between now and tomorrow you'll be surprised that uh, some of those persons being allocated to those offices may be changed you will be surprised. I am aware of the procedure that is after swearing, offices are being allocated. But this is different ball game during this period. And the man has allocated offices to them, but they are yet to be sworn in. So uh, I would rather say that after they are sworn in, we will know the real offices they occupy. Okay. Yes, that's best. Let's, let's look at it from one angle. The offices are located to them, which I say temporarily now, on TB Swan. Maybe just to sample opinion of Nigerians. That's where I look at it. Just for them to know the view. You know, there was a time a proposal came that a certain sum of money will be put to some uh, indigenous account in Nigeria. And Nigerians kick. And the man quickly did what? He withdrew it. Fine and good. So, and this one now, some persons online, media, print, press conference have been saying this is not racist. He must have listened with rapt attention. So there may be some changes. But I'm not saying it to be there may be. But even though there, is, there are changes or no changes, you see, you cannot know the depth of a water until you put your legs into it. You see, those persons who are the confidence of, the, of Mr. President, he must have studied them and have one or two reports about them. Uh, I would not say that they are not competent. Okay. To Mr. President, they are competent. But let us let us see offices that will, will be allocated to them after swearing. If they are to go with your point of view, like temporary yes. allocation, we yes. won't know until the swearing is yes. if some of it might be switched. Yes. Because the concern raised by some people is there are some ministries that the person that they put in charge of that ministry is perhaps well equipped to function in another office than the office that has been given to them. But from what you said, are we just to, to fold our arms and keep looking? Let, let us wait. But then aside from that, you see, you cannot just assume that if Dr. Yemi Omodili is made the Minister of uh, Works and Housing now, because he's a lawyer, I cannot perform that. You shouldn't assume that. You shouldn't. You will let me get to that office before you can assume. Let me tell you, you see, politicians are very tricky and they are highly intelligent. You see, some of these persons that some people are criticizing, that if they get there because this is not their feed, you put a lawyer to be in charge of education, you put a lawyer in charge of works, it doesn't matter. What matters is the performance an ability to deliver and to give dividends of democracy to the electorates. That is what is expected. Now, let me tell you, none of the ministers uh, designate who, who want to soil their names. Because the present administration... I would truly uh, agree with that. Because yes. the way things go in Nigeria yes. is someone is perhaps charged for a crime, they yes. are accused of a crime, yes. they come out, they say this, they say that, yeah. and that's why the fact that a lot of evidences, it points to the fact that this person might be guilty. 
But it's as if they play on this that Nigerians forget easily. In two months time, they would forget. Do you not feel like this is perhaps what is taking place here? Because in this list of 45 ministers yes. that we have, we have former governors, yes. which if you ask some of the the residents of their states, they would have perhaps some complaints, some substantial amounts of complaint to give about the administration of the person. But then we have these people here heading these ministries. Do you not feel like perhaps something is wrong? If you remember the case of uh, Festus Yamu, he first had to apologize to the Senate during his screening mm -hmm. for his malhandling of some cases that they had with him there. But yet, what do we have here? We also have him here that he qualified for the position and he was given the portfolio. Now, you see, nobody is infallible, as you say. Now, you see, some of the designates who may have one or two cases in court, our law is very clear. We call it presumption of innocence. Until they are found guilty, until they are tried, and probably pronouncement is made, before you can say it's convicted, it's not convicted. So, on that basis, they are free to be <laughs> minister designate. They are free. I am not supporting illegality, but what I'm saying is that following the law strictly, none of them has been convicted. So since they have not been convicted, they are still entitled to occupy those offices. Now, occupying those offices now requires their performance. It's when they perform or they don't perform. Nigerians can now say, yes, we've said it then. He has a best woman, has done well. then they can go ahead. But you see, Nigerians, we too believe in speculations and propaganda. That is the cause of the problem in Nigeria now. Little thing on life here. Little thing TV station. Little thing newspaper. Now, they make the polity to be, they hit the polity, which ought not to be like that. Now, look at it for instance now. All these ministers designate now. There are some ex-senators there. Yes. There are some uh, maybe ex-ministers, ex-governors there. They've had one or two experiences here and there. And the man said, this is the person I want. These are the people that want to work with me. It's at his discretion. Nobody can impose any candidate on him. He may only be advised, and he must have been advised in those candidates. Now, if any of them occupies a particular office and misbehaves, the, the necessary thing to be done is there. So let us, you see, we shouldn't rush. They've not even been sworn in. Nigerians are criticizing them. Why are we not patient? Why are we crying more than they believed? They should let us, we should be patient. Let them get to the office. If the man spent like three months in the office and is messing up, we can now start talking. Then why are we talking when the man has not even been sworn in? In fact, before the allocation of the, temporary allocation of the offices to the minister designate, Nigerians have been suggesting, this one is good for that, this one is good for that, this one is good, this one is good. Okay, now if the man now decides to swear them in tomorrow, and I'll say, Mr. Ojo, you are going for finance. Mr. Ajo, you are going for agriculture. What will Nigerians say again? Because they have not been sworn in. Then if at all, if he swears them in tomorrow, and now in the next 15 days, he do swapping, what will Nigerians say again? So because politicians, they have ways of carrying out their, their, their activities so that the electorates will feel the impact. If he swears them in tomorrow, and uh, maybe by Friday, next Friday, the man says, okay, you move from this to this, from this to this. Nigerians say, ah, the man is number one. That is what Nigerians want. So we should be patient, then we should be careful, and we should observe carefully before we jump into conclusion. Jumping to conclusion is creating a problem for us in this country. Look at it last Sunday here. They said petrol is going to be 729. The whole, the whole filling station shut down. It was until the CBN and the federal government now came out of and said, no, this news is not so. By 12 noon on Tuesday, all village stations open. So okay. where are we going? So let us look at another criticism that came with the ministerial portfolio. That is the one of merging some ministry and then removing some. Because yes. we have Pandev, who is vehemently against the removal of the minister for the Niger Delta region and all that. What are your thoughts on that? That is part of what I mean, jumping into conclusion. If you look at the ministerial appointment, I think some states, they've not been able to free them in. Ah. Those who are they not going to occupy some ministries, people should not jump into conclusion. I will never say that there will not be 
Ministry of Nigeria. I will never see that until maybe all the slots are occupied. Because we don't know the strategy the man has in place. Because every politician that wants to be successful in the administration must be strategic. And that is the first thing in politics. Once you are strategic, it will be difficult for you to be defeated. But once you are not strategic, our people should be observing first. They should not jump into conclusion. The Council Ministry of Niger Delta. Have they, has any of the workers in the Ministry of Niger Delta now received any letter posting them from the ministry to another one? Why are we people rushing? So let us hold on. The other states, I think maybe two or three states, they still have to fill in one or two ministerial appointments. Are they not going to occupy some offices? They are. They are. Why rush? Why conclusion? Some people have also opined that it might be a duplication of the, fun the function of Minister of Niger Delta with the NDC. Do you feel like perhaps that is maybe the reason, well, we cannot assume that the president has removed this completely, like you have said? He has not. You see, all these ministries, all these agencies, be it the NDDC, the DDD, and all the rest, they are creation of statutes. Let's be sincere, they are creation of those statutes that are created, those establishments, have those statutes been amended? Mr. President is not so bad to that extent that we just taking law into his hands. A creation of statute, then you just kill it. It is not so. It is not so at all. People should think deeply before you jump into a conclusion. Think deeply. NDDC is a creation of statute. So Mr. President will just say, I close the NDDC. Then what is the essence of the statute created that created it? Then what do you think will be done? The necessary court will be approached for interpretation. So those things, they are, they are mere conclusion. They are mere conclusion. They've not verified, they've not observed, and they are making conclusion. Definitely their recommendation will be wrong. That is it. You need to observe, you find out, you do your findings, you draw your conclusion, they will be able to recommend. But all my people, they did not do any one, they just jumped into conclusion. This one has been cancelled. Where? The, is there any memo to that effect? Government don't work in isolation. There are thinking things the man put together before coming to say, okay, the, look at it. Some weeks or some days before the man forwarded the names of the minister designated to the National Assembly, they said 60 days ago, everybody started talking. And the man keep on doing this thing, keep on doing this thing. At the end, he forwarded the names. Some were cleared, those not cleared, that is their luck. He now said, okay, these are the offices for you. They said, ah, this is wrong. This, would have been good. this man would have been useful in farming than in electrification. Do they know the experiences those ministers designate, designate as acquired? or have acquired, do they know it? So, the answer is no. So does it mean that you agree with one the statements one of the senators said when they were about to screen the ministers that yes. it doesn't matter if you have qualification in the field you are assigned, but yes. you have many people who are working with you, who are experts in that yes. field, and they would be able to guide you. Do you agree with it yes. that you do not have to be an expert you, in you, the field? No, no you, you don't need. But you need, to be, you need to have experience. Now let me tell you in ministry, one thing happens in ministry. If you are a minister, a commissioner in the ministry, you too, you need to be extremely careful. Because you meet career officers in those offices, let me tell you. The career officers, they start from year one to maximum of 35 years of service. Are you telling me that a minister or a commissioner who is going to spend maybe four years, if his, if his conduct is fine, want to be experienced more than somebody who has spent 32 years before he got to the office? The, the answer is no. So the, the, the career officers, the director, deputy director, assistant director, they are to guide. His role is supervisory, let me tell you that. And he is a mere political appointee. Every minister is a mere political appointee. The directors, the deputy director, assistant directors in, in the ministries, they are career officers. Their offices are pensionable. Ministerial appointment commissioner is not pensionable, with due respect. You only collect your extra code. Once you are administration, the government goes, you leave. Okay. But the career officer will retire, will still be collecting pension. 
and are some other gratuities. Like you mentioned that the ministerial position is mere political appointment. Yeah, it's a mere political appointment. So do you feel like it is justified that some legal practitioners are calling for the separation of the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation but, to not mix politics and law, law together? You see, uh, I, I think uh, uh, as a lawyer, in the Ministry of Justice, be it at the federal or the state level, there is what the, the office called Solicitor General, which is the office of the Permanent Secretary. He's the Chief Career Officer in that ministry, we do respect him. And uh, when the minister is not on seat or vacant, be it at the state and federal, the Solicitor General carries out the function of the minister. So, but looking at it, from one angle. People are clamoring, Nigerians, they say 48 ministers, 46 ministers. They are the ones still clamoring that the office be divided into two. You have Anthony General, you have Minister, you have Anthony General, you have Commission. Is that not increment in uh, governance expenses? I think it is. Now, the thing is still joined together. And making it a singular person occupying the, of the two offices to them. We are clamoring for reduction in governance expenses. Separating it, what does it amount to? If this one has three cars, the other one will have three cars, that makes it to be six cars. There will be increment in, the, in, the, in governance expenses. Then aside from that, I, have, I asked some people, I said, uh, particularly some of my colleagues who are also advocate of the separation, I asked them, I said, this idea of separation, what injury do anybody suffer? If it is one office, what injury? If it is two, what injury? Nobody can give me any satisfactory answer. So to me, since majority of Nigerians are saying that we should cut down the expenses in order to address some financial challenges we have in the country, I think that reasoning is also reasonable to abide by, that we should cut, the government should cut down the expenses so that we can have more money to take care of some capital projects that will be beneficial to all of us. I think I keep on that, uh, on that reasoning. Okay, all right, yes. since we do not have much time, I would wish to continue with that conversation. <laughs> but on a final note, what yes. advice would you give to this minister designate? You see the ministers, I, in fact, before they are being sworn, I congratulate all of them. That means they have done well for their political party and uh, for, they have done well for the president. So you don't agree that president. it might be a reward for loyalty or something? No, no, no. They must have worked excellently for Mr. President or the Vice President. And at their state level, they must have worked excellently for the success or victory of the party in power. So I congratulate all of them. I only advise them they should have at heart the feelings of Nigerians. Uh, they've, all of them, I think they've all made it. They shouldn't think that Nigeria will not be the best. Nigeria will still be the best. So they should ensure that the electorates, their constituency, which is their state they come from, is also remembered. And they also remember the entire Nigeria. They should not be selfish. They should be transparent because so that their names can be in the Guinness Book of Record and their name will not be in the Black Book. All that right. is my advice for them. I, I wish them best of luck in the offices they are going to occupy and I wish them best of luck. And I know some of them will also perform well. Some of them will do well. Okay, let's hope for the sake of Nigeria that they all perform well at this they point. They will perform. Yes. You know, performance in Nigeria is of two ways. You can have positive performance and you can have negative performance. So let us hope for the positive performance well, well, of all well, positive, positive, positive. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Maybe. All right, thank you Maybe. so much. Yeah. Unfortunately, we never seem to have enough time on the show. I wonder why. So many thanks for being with us on I the show thank today. Thank you, presenter, and I thank the listeners as well. Uh, we will keep on uh, advocating the best for this country. Because right. women abroad, home is better. Don't run out of Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria will still be like uh, China, will still be like Dubai, will still be like Europe. Yeah. Don't run away. Stay here. There are a lot of prosperities in this country.
Oh, I sincerely hope so too. And that's Dr. Yemi Omodele, a legal practitioner. Once again, many thanks for being on the show with us. I thank the owner, generous and the whole world. All right, and many thanks to, to Alistair Wilcox, who joined us live from Lagos State, an economy expert. Unfortunately, this is where we will join the curtain close on today's episode of Firecrackers. My name is Emiba Misawako. See you same time, same station next week. To have a wonderful week ahead.